So hello and welcome to a film mixologist, the place on the internet thingy where we work uh, um, against the seasons, uh, so to speak. And case in point, this unit here, um, when I say work kind of off season, what I mean is that, uh, as you can see, this is a marine carp. I'm going to show you a bit, a bit closer. What are the main, you know, features of it? But the reality is that. Um, at least here in the UK, I'm recording this September 23. The the season for you know using boats and uh, navigation and whatnot, it generally tends to be kind of spring to kind of summer, mainly the summer, isn't it? Spring summer kind of thing. So at the moment, you know that sailing season is kind of coming to an end, really. So you know. Uh, if I get this marine carp running, chances are that um, really it's going to sell um, next season, probably. Uh, that doesn't mean I don't have to do it. It's just that I've got the time now to do it in my you know production schedule, uh, and therefore I'm just going to do it now. I'm just going to make it you know make it run again, make it live again, just box it up so that I've got it ready ready to dispatch uh, when the time comes which will who knows when it, when it will be but it's likely to be at this point maybe next year i could get lucky and i could sell it now uh, but maybe it's going to be next year so i'll show you a bit closer uh what we're dealing with this i'm really excited about this build because it's going to be the first build in airfield mixologist with a uh, annular venturis okay so here's the the unit in all of its uh um, glory uh, the only issue it's got it's got this issue we need to straighten straighten out um, um, this here uh, but apart from that it's you know it's a, it's a very good uh, marine unit and as you can see here it's got the annular discharge uh, Venturis um, which again they are uh, an air film mixologist first obviously as you can see here we've got a little bit of a problem on the choke uh, because it's, this thing is snackered but that's okay I've got a replacement one so that should be fine so now what we need to do is just disassemble this thing and just um, do a further diagnostic to see uh, what we're working with Okay, so this unit is actually in um, not such bad shape, to be honest. Obviously, it's got it's got a few few issues, you know, a little bit of of corrosion here and there. Here, it's, it's kind of quite bad. Let's see, a bit here, not so bad here. Um, a few details here and there, but actually, you know, all in all, it could be much worse. So actually, I'm not I'm not. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the with the condition of the unit um, so far. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the ultrasonic cleaner and give it a nice little soaking um, and cleaning so that we've got it uh, ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so we've got uh, some progress and some lack of progress. So I'll show you a bit a bit closer uh, what I mean by this. Because I hit a bit of a snag uh, in the road, but I think I'll, I'll be able to just about kind of turn around uh, because obviously the spare parts. So let me show you what, what, what I'm talking about. Okay, so as you can see, we've got <clears throat> we've got some, some some parts here that have been cleaned. Um, in a in a in a in a in a few minutes, I'm gonna uh, talk about how to uh, tune the um, the metering blocks how to how to jet the carbs in, in kind of marine applications in general so we park that but those are clean as you can see the base plate is now clean and reassembled 
um, as it should be. Uh, however, and obviously the uh, the main body is is nice and clean, so it's 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 ready for assembly. We've also done the choke. Remember when it came when it came to the shop, it was you know a bit knackered, but now it's you know absolutely fine. There you go. Um, so really, it was all going well until I, I I tried to kind of put it back together, and I was testing the fuel bowls. And as you can see, every time I test the fuel bowl, I put a little T in there, saying that this fuel bowl works absolutely fine. This one is golden. However, this one, I had a I hit a bit of snag in the road, which is I pulled. I put this fuel bowl together with a new, obviously a new needle and seat. Um, this um, this float is fine. I tested it, so the float is not the problem. What is the problem is this thing right here. I don't know if you can see it there. I'm pointing to it. So this there is some damage in here, and the problem with this is that this is the kind of like the seating surface for the uh, fuel union and therefore what I'm getting is I'm getting a leak here and if you can see here this this bit is damaged uh, around there so unfortunately I mean I think this can just about be repaired but it needs you know a little bit of work so in the interim what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put kind of a new set of cathedral style uh, fuel bowls, uh, and this should, you know, cure the um, the immediate problem of kind of not having a fuel bowl. But so, uh, and essentially, what I'm doing is I'm doing um, the the carb. I'm putting them back with cathedral style fuel bowls, which is what it came with with the factory. So that's okay. Okay, so now let's let let's try and do this kind of the t kind of the title of the video. You know, at the beginning of the project, I told you that I couldn't find the specs for the car, but eventually I could find them. I went through Holly uh, and I found the the, the correct specs. I, I'm funny enough, I, I was I was a little bit puzzled about the, the specs because the jets in the secondary were 66s and the jets in the primary were 68s. So, so that's why I'm going to do this this little kind of discussion about what determines the the fuel delivery at full throttle on holy cars, well, marine ones specifically here. So, you've got three variables at play here. The first one is the jet size. So that's that that's pretty obvious. Have varying numbers of jets, 66, 68, 72, whatever it is that it comes with the factory. I'm reproducing the factory's uh, settings by the way. And then you've got the power valve opening, which is you know when we say a 65 power valve basically opens at 6.5 inches of mercury, which is about here in this unit here, which is a vacuum gauge. So I'll show you, and then, that's very important, and then you've got the, the, power, the diameter of the opening of the power valve channel. Because the fueling, the fueling at full throttle is determined by these two variables, the jet size and the opening of the power valve channel. So let me show you a bit closer because because you, you really need to be very close to see this. What, I, what I've got here is essentially the back of a metering block and at this back what you can see is you can see this hole here this is the channel of the power valve and this is the jet size. So as you can see, whoops, fell off. Um, let me let me put it back on. As you can see, the opening on the on the channel of the power valve is nearly as big as the opening on the jet. So obviously, when the power valve opens in this unit, it's gonna it's gonna 
is going to create an insane amount of fueling. And that is why I think that the carb is jetted this way. So let's see what happens with with your um, with, with, with your vacuum gauge. So basically, when when the vacuum gauge is about yay, so 2.5, which is the power valve, that is where you're going to get this opening and this fueling event that would combine your your main jet, which is this one, plus that one at 2.5 inches of mercury. Yeah, and that's what's going to cost uh, cause quite a lot of fueling. So, <laughs> if you're a if you're a boat owner uh, and you want to uh, do some economical cruise with the, at least with this carb, you're looking at maintaining the vacuum around here, thereabouts. Yeah, uh, about this range, thereabouts. And this is why what, what puzzled me because the jets in the secondary are slightly smaller than the ones in the primary. But what I think Holly has done is that it's put all the fueling in here and in the primary jet. So this is the main driver of the fueling and the secondary is just, you know, go along for a ride kind of thing. So I think that's what's happening with this car in, in particular that Holly engineered it to be fueled mainly from the primaries. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to obviously after this explanation i'm going to put it put it together and then i'll show you uh, as i go along the, the the rest of the process okay so here you can see the unit that is finished uh, probably not because it is a marine gut so now what we need to do is we need to uh, kind of mask everything up and get it ready for painting because obviously as it is a marine cup it would need to be uh, painted to protect it from corrosion but you know the bare bones are here ready as you can see marine cups generally on the outside they i don't tend to do a lot of uh, stuff in terms of finishing because I know all of this is going to get painted anyway to protect from corrosion so that's okay so now what we need to do is we need to mask the areas that we're not going to paint and get it ready for paint okay so here we can see the unit in in all of its uh, glory now see painted to protect it you know from corrosion when it's installed in a you know marine environment which is you know the right thing to do obviously if you look here, um, obviously the base plate isn't painted, but that's okay. It goes mated to the manifold, that's why. So, um, so here it is, and it's done. So I want to say thank you very much for watching this episode. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, please uh, put it down in the comments. And if not, I'll see you on the next episode.